YouTube channel. It is the middle of winter. It's very cold in January in Ireland, so I am spending a bit of time fixing up some of my mining equipment. And today I have to do a bit of work on my Henderson pump, otherwise known as a hand dredge or in Australia a yabby pump. And um, I've taken apart my one from this year, which has seen better days. And I'm going to build a new one, so I thought while I was at it, I may as well fill in the process and uh, let you see how to make one for yourselves because it's a very simple process and they're very useful tools. Okay, the idea for those of you who don't already know in a hand dredge or a Henderson pump is um, it's just basically a pipe, um, whatever length you want it to be, and something inside that when you draw it back and forward, you create a suction, you can suck your gravel off the bottom of the river and feed into a classifier bucket or a sluice or whatever, whatever way you want to do it. So to start off, it's a very, very basic tool. It's not complicated. Um, the easiest one to do is to use this downpipe, a section of downpipe, any standard downpipe. It usually, usually comes in black. Um, it's, it's a good size because the tennis ball fits perfectly inside it and makes a nice rubber seal for the draw. But the first thing you need to do is decide what length you want. I have all sorts of lengths of these things depending on what, length you're, what, what size you're, area you're working in. I even made that one a couple of years ago for a little tight crevice that I couldn't get into. It's only about a foot and a half long, but it was very handy down in a little crack in a rock. And there's an overhanging rock and I couldn't get into the big one, so I made a little small one temporarily. So today we're going to make one this length. No, that's too long. We're going to have to cut it. Okay, so we don't need the off cut just yet, we'll, we'll come in useful later. So don't throw these bits and pieces away, sometimes you have running repairs to do and the off cuts are useful. So we now have our 80cm long main outer casing pipe for our Henderson pump. The next thing we need is an internal pipe. Uh, we have got an 80cm outer casing pipe for our Henderson pump and this is what I'm going to use to sheath the rod on the inside. Any old bit of pipe will do, as you can see this is an old thing that's been through the ringer, it's been used a couple of times before, but it's too long because it has to be slightly shorter than this to allow for a tennis ball on the end and a handle at the top and a little bit of a gap at the bottom. So that's 80 centimetres, I'm going to make this slightly less and allow for the tennis ball. And I'm going to make this. That's 80. That's the tennis ball. That's a couple more, it's 72 centimetres. So 72 centimetres should do this pipe. As I say, this doesn't have to be very exact. It's just to give you a rough idea of what I'm doing. I'm sure there's lots of videos available. But I just thought I'd make it since we're doing it anyway. Okay, let me cut this. 72. Tip. 72 centimetres. There. So we need to cut that, so we're going to cut it here, snip, right, that's another bit of scrap, so I'll put that to one side. So I've got my internal pipe and I've got my external pipe. So the next thing I need to do is to put a handle on this. This is just an old spade handle, you get these from any garden centres or better still, you get them in the skip, usually thrown out by someone, and that's going to be the handle. But I don't like it rocking about inside the pipe. Some people don't mind. I don't like it. So what I've done is I've cut a couple of discs, little discs of just like, I don't know what it's from. It's just a little bit of like plasticky stuff. And I've cut a couple of those just to go as an end cap because as I've already said, it's quite hard to get an end cap for a lunch pipe and those. I've drilled the centre of those already to take a pipe that size. So we put those in like that. What I'll usually do is screw a couple of these things together to make it a bit more robust because it's going to be taking a lot of abuse. Okay, 
So we have our disc for the end of our pipe. And that should fit pretty neatly. And it does. The next thing we need to do now is attach that disc into the pipe so it doesn't rock about. And again, just do it with a couple of screws fixed in from the side. What I use for the center of this to hold the whole thing together and give it strength is just one of these threaded rods. They come in meter lengths and they're pretty cheap. That was only 99 pence, so they're, they're pretty cheap. And I use that. Attach them through a handle, like so, or washer, right down the middle of this. And then onto the tennis ball, which should be here, so this needs to cut a wee bit of length. Um, now it has to go through the middle of the tennis ball. So we need to make a couple of holes in that. And then on the opposite side again. So I'm going to set up again. This is not exact. Down to here. And just this rod needs to be cut roughly that length. So the next thing we need to do is cut our rod. It's nipped. Okay, I am going to now attach this through the pipe. No, wait, I'll attach it to the handle first of all. Like that. Now you need one of these nuts, these locking nuts. It won't loosen with wear and with use, because otherwise it can be very difficult. And you put that in just a bit, not much to get grip, a couple of tightens with spanner if you need to. You just to lock this in place, put a couple of washers on. Left, left. Now, when you have the bar secure in the handle, you can put the rest of it together. Okay, so you have to put it together in this particular order. You put on your end cap first, make sure the screws of the protruding are face down. Then you put on your outer sleeve, which is your inner sleeve. Do that up to here. And then you're left with this bit sticking out. So this is the important bit that generates the suction in the Henderson pump. Line this up roughly square through the ball, like so. Now, it's very important at this stage that you put a washer on the end. I have a little curved washer here that I found on another fitting. I'm going to put that on, and you put your locking nut on the very end of that, like so, and give it a good tighten up. So it's a nice tight fit. Now, just to give you an idea of how this works, the tighter you make that, the more compressed it makes the ball, and the wider it makes it, it gives you more suction on the pump. So you don't want it too tight that you can't use the thing, and your arms get tired, and you don't want it too loose that you're not getting enough suction. So this here is how you make more suction or less suction, just adjusting that lock and screw. And when you have that done, you put the whole thing into the outer casing, like so, you're feeding it through and locking it in place there. You should have a big gap at the bottom, as we do. And then you just secure this bit in place, this holds the whole thing together with a couple of screws. You want three of these in place to stop it from twisting. I'm moving so there's one two it's worth doing pilot holes in these just to start the screws off because it's quite hard to screw in that down pipe three Okay, so that's everything in place. That's your very basic Henderson pump there. When you draw it back, you get the suction. It 
pushed forward and back, so it's just a matter of making like a kind of a hoover thing with a seal up there. Quite hard work running one all day. That's just a nice when you hold it upside down like that, the pump shouldn't fall out or it's too loose. But equally, it should be so hard that you can't draw it. If uh, it is too tight or too loose, you just adjust that nut in there on the end to make it looser or tighter as you require. Now, that's the easy one to make. That is a downpipe or three inch Henderson or Yabby pump or whatever you want. Okay, people, that is a, basic, a very basic Henderson pump, but that's all it really needs. And that's it ready for action. And hopefully, sucking up some gold out in the, the woods. I'll uh, show you a little clip in a moment or two of using one, just to show you. I'm sure most of you know how these things work anyway. Um, these yabby pumps or whatever. Um, you can put attachments on the end of them just to give them a bit more life expectancy. That one, uh, the old one did have a bracket on the end of it for different fittings to go on. Like that. If it's broken now after a year's use, they don't last that long. And you can put reducers on them if you wanted um, to get down to maybe a two inch. You get a lot more suction with tension, you get into smaller cracks if you're working around bedrock. You can put reducers. Old hose fittings are very useful if you can get uh, some sort of attachment to join on hose fittings. The other thing you can do is you can put on 90 degree sections like that. So you use some of your offcuts. And then when you're working them, you can suck the gravel up and then turn so it doesn't fall out when you're, and then put it into your classifier. So you can suck it like that and then turn it up, right? You can use a little section of your offcut on that there. It stops the material coming flying back out and put it into your bucket. But there's lots and lots of different variations in this theme and adaptations. But that's how I make them. And um, I will send one of these off to one of my subscribers if you just like the video and post any comments you have. Thank you very much. Okay, people, as a homage to my inspiration, Two Toes, aka Gary from California. It's the next day. Um, we got caught up with daylight yesterday, so I'm back again today. We have finished um, a couple of the smaller pumps, and I want to show you a more heavy duty pump that some of you may or may not want to make. Um, it's a much bigger diameter than this one. It can move an awful lot more material. I'd say maybe three times as much, but it's a lot harder work. So the first thing it says, if you're going to make yourself a heavy duty one, you've got two problems. One is the weight off it just so it's only for hard heavy duty sucker pumping and the other one is a tennis ball will not fit up the inside of that that's going to be no use to you at all so you need a different mechanism for using the for creating a suction on it in this case i have used a black and decker rubber sander backing mat um you can get these in any hardware store and they're rubber and they make an ideal seal but it's very hard to get one the right size so just to show you very very briefly what I did for the bigger model is you put that down you put your pipe over the top of it you draw a circle around the rubber and you cut that off with a Stanley knife or whatever tool you wish so it fits inside and you pair it down it doesn't have to be too tight a fit or you won't be able to draw the thing um, it doesn't matter if there's a few little cracks it's exact but as close as you can get it um, and then you just attach that to a rod, like so. You attach that to a, what's the term for it? A rod, anyway, one of these, um, I can't remember the name of it. But a threaded rod, a threaded rod. So, I've just done it with a couple of washers. So that's really one of those mats there, cut down to size. Uh, that was a, that was a five inch disc, I think, only a four inch pipe. So it was only a bit to come off it. And uh, that should fit quite nicely down the, whoops, whoops, whoops down the, the inside of the heavier duty pipe. So you put that in, like so, once you've thread it on. And then you need your inner pipe. I've used this grey dish washer or washing machine pipe. And you simply put the sleeve over that. And it's the same process as yesterday. You just put it on your handle, on the top of that. But before you do that, I should hasten to add. Um, bring it up a little bit so this is slightly proud you need the end cap and cut a hole in the end cap uh, that will fit the drain pipe like so once you put this in you can't get them back out again so make sure you've everything cut well you can get them back out but it's a lot of work so just make sure you've everything in place before you do that and that just holds the thing nice and rigid for you for the 
the pump. You want to throw it on your handle. You usually put a little nut or something on the inside or a washer or something. I put a washer on. So I put my nut on, a couple of washers. It doesn't have to be too exact. It's just a little bit of this wiggle room. And then you put it on your handle like so. That should fit inside your dishwasher pipe. Whoops. So, and then a couple more nuts on top of these ordinary square nuts, bolts, nuts. I say sometimes that threaded bar can be quite hard to get started. That's it now. Just putting a few of these on because it's a bit of lock nut in the end. And uh, you want that nice and tight when you're finished up. When you have everything secured in place, you want to put one of these locking nuts on the top to stop the thing coming loose with wear. And again, just tighten that in as much as you can. It's a little bit hard to do with the uh, damage the top of the threads on the threaded bar after you cut it as far as you want. That's that tightened on. So this is the, the heavy duty model finished. And you can see there's a good suction there, even though the pipe isn't that tight there. You can see how it's working. Just as you draw in. It's getting a good suction, a good vacuum. And that's able to shift a lot of dirt for you in a day. Now the problem with this is, unlike the small bar, it's very easy to hold that. But this is difficult to hold. So there's a thing you can get called a strap wrench, which I haven't got today, but I'm going to put a little bit of a video on um, afterwards showing you this thing in use, feeding a classifier, and you'll see it in action then, and I'll have it attached. It's just a strap, goes around here, and a wrench, and it just acts as a handle for you, so you use it like, more like a pump action shotgun. So that's all, that's all there is to it, that's the big one, and we're done.